So, uh, losing muscle mass. Losing muscle mass is generally because of two things. Number one, you're not eating enough calories. Number two, you're not eating enough protein. So if you like to remember, protein is about 18 to 20% of your body mass. So it's the second most abundant substance in the body after water. So we really need to... <laughs> Cassie, ah, oh, cash, dusting off their heels. So we really need to make sure that we're getting enough protein in. Because um, if we don't, then obviously we're going to lose muscle. And it's important to get enough protein and keep that ratio in the body because it does a lot of really, really good jobs. It does three main jobs, actually, protein. So the main job is obviously to repair um, anything in the body. So if you, you cut yourself or... Um, you know you've got an injury then it's obviously protein and the metabolic reactions that you get around that um, will be sort of the main influencer when you when you're when you're injured um, so the protein is used to repair and it's also used to grow your muscles it's also used in hormone production and it's also as I've already mentioned um, used for metabolic reactions and also as well if you get your your proper protein ratio in, then um, it's really good for satiety. So uh, hopefully when you start eating more protein, you will be less hungry and more full. Uh, let's just see who's coming on. Oh, my comments keep swiping off. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Viv. Hey, Claire. Ah, uh, Claire Dangerfield, she killed it this morning. Awesome, lots of you on. So 21 of you on, oops. Um, we wanna learn about protein. <laughs> so when we eat protein, obviously it doesn't go into your body and just get distributed. So protein um, has nine essential amino acids in there. So when we eat the protein, our digestive system and our body break that down into the nine amino acids. And they've all got various jobs that I'm not gonna go into now, but they do sort of all different things. Um, so people mainly, strive to eat the correct protein percentage or correct protein um, amount to keep their muscle mass or to grow their muscle mass and that's really important and that's uh claire hi great class this morning yeah you did awesome so you did your own great class so we need to eat protein to obviously keep the muscle mass that we have and then to grow the muscle mass that we want so we do need to eat to our calories, obviously, um, when we're trying to grow muscle. So we do give you a calorie target in AbFab, um, and that will be a slight deficit from what the um, InBody recommends, but that's to make sure that you are progressing and reach your goals. Um, but we don't take that deficit down too much. It's only you know 100 calories or like 10% of your calorie intake. So it's still manageable, so you've still got plenty of energy, and you've still got plenty of calories to grow that muscle and carry on with your everyday life. If you have your calories too low, um, then your body will go into what we call a catabolic state. You've probably heard of anabolic catabolic. So anabolic is good, that means growth, um, growth and repair. Catabolic means that your body is not in a good state. If your body is catabolic, generally if you've got, if you're taking your calories too low or your protein too low, your body will use your body fat and it will also use your muscle mass to create energy. So the fat, it will use the fat first to get energy, but then it will break down your muscle if your calories are too low because your body needs nutrients. So it would take the nutrients out of your muscle mass. So generally, if you're not eating enough calories or you're not eating enough protein, um, that is what is happening. So as I said before, the ad fab calories are enough calories to ensure you get muscle growth and ensure that you have enough energy for the day and obviously ensure that you have enough energy to make your gym classes as well. So I was just gonna quickly go through a, sort of a quick calculation of, of how much protein that you should eat. I get a lot of that uh, in, asked on me in my classes. Um, Sam Gill looks like, oh, I've missed all the comments, but I'm assuming they're all awesome. So Sam Gill is coming to the Christmas party. Get that dress going, Sam. Uh, Debs, I did my in-body today, increased muscle by almost 1%, all really down to eating protein with every meal, not down to working out. Yes, exactly. 
Well done, Debs. That's really good. 1% muscle mass. Hey, Belinda. How are you? <laughs> so I was going to go through a quick calculation, sort of a quick and dirty um, calculation of how much protein that you should be eating. Um, there's a lot of ladies uh, coming up to me um, saying they're eating this much, this much and this much. And it really, really isn't enough protein. So um, just to stress how much we should be eating. So I'm going to take myself. So putting my weight out there now. Is that backwards or forwards? Ah, forwards. Excellent. I flipped my camera. All right. So my weight is roughly 63 kgs. And I have a calorie intake of 1,650. So that puts me in a little bit of a deficit. So that ensures that I'm still losing um, body fat. But it doesn't. It, it, it makes sure that I've got enough energy to keep going throughout the day. So obviously I've said about NEAT on previous lives, if we don't have enough calories, then we're not moving enough during the day, we can't be bothered to go to the gym, we're very not, um, I keep forgetting the word, with the hands, you know, gesticulative. <laughs> I think I said that before. Anyway, so if your calories are too low, we don't move as much, we don't burn as many calories off. So your body doesn't like that. So we like to say a minimum amount of, cal of protein is 1.5 grams of protein per gram of body weight. That's a very, very quick and dirty, okay? So I'm 63 kgs, my calories are 1,650 a day. I have to eat as a minimum 1.5 grams of protein per gram of body weight. Okay, so a calculator. I don't have, oh yes, I do have a calculator. So that works out at 94 and a half grams per day of protein. Is anyone eating anywhere near that amount of protein? I think most ladies I'm seeing unless you're really watching it, are eating about 50, 60 grams of protein. Let's have a look. On here. Oh, we're all talking about Sam coming to the Christmas party. That's awesome. All right, so minimum 1.5 grams of protein per day per gram of body weight. So in my case, that's going to be 94 and a half grams. So that will equal, does anyone know how many grams, uh, sorry, how many, how many calories in one gram of protein? We should all know this now, but I want to see your answers. It's very hard to get that amount of protein in. Yes, I'm going to cover that in a second. <laughs> That's your very minimum though. So one and a half grams per gram of body weight is your very, very minimum. So how many calories are there in one gram of protein? So Nick, you need to start tracking your protein if you don't know how much you're eating. Just track it for a, a week, just to see. But it's quite easy to work out. If you, if you know your body weight, times that by one and a half grams, and then you can get a rough idea of how much protein you should be eating a day. Yeah, Coach Tash. Four calories, that's right. So, four calories per gram of protein. So if I was eating 94 and a half grams of protein a day, that equals 388 calories. Okay, so 388 calories of my 1650 needs to be in protein. Does that surprise anyone at all? Because I know people struggle with protein. It's one of those things that people struggle with. So we're gonna go through some ideas of sort of quick and dirty protein snacks that we can get. But is that a surprise? Is anyone thinking, oh my God, I don't eat enough protein? I know Nick said, Sam has said as well, that she doesn't eat enough protein and maybe they need to look at upping it.
Carnan, how do you know she'll be in 1006? That's, that's my, um, so you've got your TDEE, which is your, uh, basically your basal metabolic rate, plus the exercise and the movement that you do in the day. The InBody gives you your TDEE. It will also give you um, the amount of calories that sh you should be eating. Um, and then we generally take about 100 or 10 percent of calories off of that so that you're in a little deficit not too much of a deficit obviously we don't want want you in a massive deficit because then as i said before your body goes into that catabolic state and we don't want that but we do email you your in body results when you first weigh on in body so if any new members are online um, you should have an email in your inbox and we give you your recommended calories and then we also recommend which I'm going to go through in a minute, a percentage amount. So I'm just going through at the moment a very, very quick and dirty way of working out your calories per gram. So 1.5 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight is the simplest way of thinking of it. Cool. Yeah, Claire says four calories. Yeah, fat is nine, nine calories per gram, so protein is good. So at AbFab, we kind of generally recommend that you eat 30% of your calories as protein. So if I did that on my body weight and my calorie intake, 30% equals about 495 calories. So you can see it's about 100-ish calories difference between... The very quick and dirty way of working out and what we kind of give oh hang on going backwards forwards this way <laughs> so 495 calories is 30 percent of this all right so i should be eating 495 calories worth of protein and actually that equals if you if you if you do it backwards 123 grams of protein i should be eating a day for optimum results and for optimum muscle growth. So the quick and dirty will give you the amount you should be eating. That's your very, very minimum. And then at AdVab, we kind of recommend 30% of your calories come from protein. And if you work that back, so 30% of 16650 is 495 calories. And then if you divide that by four, then you get 123. So that's a lot of protein. And I know I don't, I don't eat enough protein a day. It's really hard for me because I don't eat, eat I don't eat meat, but I do eat fish. Um, but I am sort of racking in about 115 grams a day because I'm really consciously thinking about it. So just stopping for the comments. Thanks one sec. Oh dear. Let's see. I see. I see. Yeah, so Cass says they're on the in-body sheet. I don't know why these comments are just in like one little line. I can't see anything. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so Debs, I've been adding protein powder to oats in the morning and started to eat cottage cheese again. Well done. That's awesome. So Belinda, Belinda loves cottage cheese. Great as a snack for a protein sauce. A nice bit of apple or rice cake. Yeah, some great ideas coming in here for protein. Ideas for protein snacks. So Claire Dangerfield, keep tuned in, and then I'm sure Linda's going to come up with loads. Protein with every meal, definitely. At least a third of your plate, obviously 30% of your calories. Again, as a rough guesstimate, a third, third of your plate should be protein. So Natasha eats lots of pulses, beans, legumes, and she supplements with protein shakes because she's plant-based and vegan. Are you vegan or...? Vegetarian. So Debs uses cottage cheese as a snack. Yeah, so there's lots of fab ideas coming through. So that kind of gives you an idea of how much you should be eating. Um, I know it's a bit of a surprise to some people, but 50 to 60 grams of protein really, really is not enough for a day. So we need to really start to focus on increasing that protein. And then we hopefully will reduce that uh, decrease in muscle mass on the in-body. 
So what else do we need for growing muscles? Well, another important component for growing muscle is obviously your hormones. And the main hormone um, that does increase muscle mass is testosterone. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Ladies, <laughs> ladies, you all have testosterone, not in the amounts that men have it. So you're never going to be big and bulky. So don't worry about that. Um, but we need to make sure we've got optimum testosterone, especially as we get older. Uh, Deb's lots of protein in my morning burgers. Morning burgers? <laughs> What's going on with morning burgers? <laughs> So we do have to make sure that our protein, uh, sorry, our testosterone levels are as optimum as they can be. As obviously, as we go into the menopause, as we get older, we do lose a lot of progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. So we've got to try and keep these nicely topped up. So there's four main things that you can do to help your testosterone levels. And again, as I'm going to repeat this repeatedly, repeatedly, you need testosterone. It's not going to make you bulky it's gonna help your muscles grow. So optimum testosterone and um, optimum protein, you're really gonna see that muscle mass increase. So there's four things that you can help that. Number one, sleep. So testosterone um, manufacture in your body, you really, really need good quality sleep. So you need that for everything. That's one of our healthy habits. So you need a good seven hours sleep, Nice dark room, no blue lights, switch on, switch off the screens and the iPhones at least an hour before you go to bed. Have a nice milky drink, hot bath, you know, all the kind of usual things that we, we like to um, do before we go to sleep. Second, number two, exercise. That's probably quite important. So you guys are smashing it in the gym, so that's really, really good. But Testosterone production needs um, intense exercise. So if you become acclimatized to a certain weight in the gym, so you always go and pick up an eight kilogram kettlebell, um, that's not going to be that's not going to be good for your muscle growth. You need to kind of increase that. So maybe next time you're in the gym, take an eight and a ten, and then try with the ten. Do a couple of reps, one to five reps with the ten kilogram kettlebell. If it's really too much then you can change back to the lighter one. But it's really important for muscle growth to progress those weights as we go through. So intense exercise, if you get acclimatized, you know, you're not gonna increase that hormones, um, that hormone function in your body. So you really need to stimulate your growth hormone with heavier weights if we can. And you can do that gradually, you know, you can start off one to five reps one week, then the next time you're in the gym, you can pick up the 10 again and then maybe you can do, you know, a couple more reps. So it is a very gradual process. Don't expect to go into a gym, pick up a completely brand new kettlebell that's heavier than you've ever used before and expect to do a whole 45 seconds with it because it's not going to happen. But it's slow and it's progressive and that's what we're aiming for. The next one. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not recommending any supplements, any shape, way, shape or form, but we really need to make sure we're getting our omega-3s in. So you can take these as a supplement form, or you can eat a lot of um, oily fish, such as mackerel, salmon. Um, if you don't eat fish and you're vegan, then obviously things like flaxseed and quinoa have omega-3s in it as well. They were just oh, talking too much. I can't get through. Nicola King, very wind, uh, Nicola Payne, very windy. <laughs> I don't even know what the question was to that, but I'm not even going to look. <laughs> and Tash says, intensity of workout releases, yes, growth hormones. So that's exactly what I've been saying. So we need sleep, good quality sleep. We need to progressively um, come up in weights into our exercise, in our exercise um, classes. Don't go too quickly. We don't want injuries, guys. So, you know, by all means, pick up a heavier weight, do a few reps. If it's comfortable, carry on. If not, go back down to that lighter weight, but you're still progressing. Hey, Michelle. Then we have omega-3. So obviously you can get your omega-3s from natural sources, uh, food sources, such as if it's oily fish, or if, as I said, as you're vegan, you've got your flaxseed and your quinoa, and I'm sure that Tash can put on there a ton of other stuff that you can get omega-3s from. 
Um, but if you struggle getting that in the diet, you can um, get yourself a good quality supplement. Um, so you can buy fish oil supplements, which have your omega-3s in. So you need to make sure it's got EHA and DHA in it, so both of them. Um, there is um, There are more and more on the market now vegan um, omega-3. So they take omega-3 directly from the algae. So they grow the algae, take the omega-3 out of that. Because the fish, at the end of the day, eat the algae and that's why they've got so much omega-3 in them. So you're going straight to the plant source if you're vegan. So that's three. Sleep, exercise, omega-3s and obviously the next one is going to be vitamin D. So we really need to get some vitamin D. Super hard in the winter. Um, so try and get out in the sun, bare skin, 20 minutes in the sun, in the summer is good for production of vitamin D. In the winter, our bodies tend not to make it from sunlight. So from October to March, you will need to supplement with a vitamin D sub, uh, vitamin D supplement. And there's many good ones on the market. Um, pretty cheap as well. Um, just make sure you keep those vitamin D levels topped up. They're also good for your mood as well. So there's a double benefit there. Let's have a quick look at these comments. Not that I can see them. Evening, Jean. I can't see any of these comments. So Belinda says nuts and seeds are a really good source of protein and other nutrients. Yep, they've also got omega-3s in them as well. So that's awesome. Um, Debbie Peacock, do we need tickets for a Christmas party? Yes, you will need tickets. Um, Jane will be releasing them, which you'll be able to collect from the gym. I'm thinking maybe in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we'll keep definitely keep you posted on the Facebook group about that. But you will need a ticket to get in. And then obviously... Um, if you're bringing partners, that will be £30 that needs to be paid um, into Jane's PayPal. I think she's put the details on the Facebook, but I can ask her to repost if you need them. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Jenny Johns, please can we get some more 10kg slam balls at Gunpowder? Yes, we have incoming slam balls. We've got a few 10s. I think we've got a couple of 12s now. Um, and I know Mark is working on getting us some more tens and eight kettlebells as well, because all you ladies are going up in strength, which is awesome. Um, probably a few other surprises coming to Gunpowder as well, so we'll keep you posted as and when. Obviously, we need to order this equipment, so it's it's not going to be straight away, but it is incoming, I promise. And we have a brand new sign up at Gunpowder, so at the end of the canopy, everyone knows we are at Fab Fit Club. That went up today. And Deb will be pleased to know that we got the new whiteboards as well. So they're actually readable now and you can write on them as, as well as we go. <laughs> Deb's is like, yeah. <laughs> Cass, when are the tickets available? Cass, uh, not entirely sure yet. Uh, we haven't been told ourselves, but I'm, um, I'm told it's gonna be imminent. So watch this space. You'll be able to collect them from your class in the gym. Cast may need a few at Thumbwood. My 10 kg had a hole in it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, those slam balls are getting a getting there. Uh, yeah, well used, shall we say? So I think yeah, we need to replace a few. We definitely need to replace a few at Gunpowder, even the even the lighter ones. Um, so yeah, Mark's working really hard on doing that for us. So don't you worry, it is incoming at both gyms. Belinda thinks she used that one too. <laughs> Did anyone get sand on the floor? That's the thing. When the sand falls out the kettlebells or the slam balls and you get it in your hair, that's always a nice treat. <laughs> so has anyone got any questions on the protein or sources of protein, good sources of protein? I think I can also cover as well uh, at the beginning of this, I said we need um, all nine essential amino acids. So that's called a complete protein. And that's mainly from animal sources. So your meat, your fish, um, your dairy, eggs, they will all be complete proteins. They have all nine amino acids and they go into your body. Your body breaks the proteins down. And then the nine amino acids just generally do the jobs that they're supposed to do in the body. If you're vegan or you're vegetarian, you do not generally um, get complete 
um, amino acid profiles in any of the proteins that you get from a veggie source. So it's really important if you don't eat meat that you mix up what you're eating as a vegetarian or vegan. So you, you need some nuts in there, you need tofu, you need lentils, you need beans because they all have the separate amino acids. So you need to make sure that you're getting all nine amino acids in your diet if you're veggie and vegan. The only complete um, protein, sorry, the only complete protein that is plant-based is soya and I think quinoa as well. So make sure you get plenty of those in your diet as well if you are vegetarian. Uh, Rachel, thanks Sarah, we've got to go. Been away for the weekend and hubby just in from work, so better say hello. Yeah, I reckon you better say hello, but thank you for joining Rachel. Always lovely to have you on. See you in the gym next week, hopefully. And Belinda said, eggs are the best food ever. Yeah, eggs are the best food and they're so versatile. You can do so much with an egg. <laughs> you can fry it, you can boil it, you can omelette it, you can scramble it, you can make lovely muffins with it. I mean, honestly, the food is amazing. Hey, Gemma. Nice to join. I've got 21 of you on. So Sue Elson, I had a 12 kg slang ball with a hole in it too. Oh, okay. If Mark's not on, I will send him a message afterwards to say we need a whole raft of new slang balls because they're all falling apart. That's all you ladies, all strong, you see? Picking up the heavy ones. Uh, I think I've answered everyone's question. Anyone got any more questions, guys? I know I can only see like one line of comments which is a right pain so Debs is a big fan of eggs they contain all the vitamins and minerals as well yeah they are a big nutrient powerhouse what about cholesterol nervous about eating too many eggs I think that was dismissed um, Steph so there is no correlation between high cholesterol and the amount of eggs eaten I think there's a few medical reports out now I know there was a big scare back way back when um, as always, everything in moderation. Um, I mean, I, I can eat up to three or four eggs a day sometimes because I don't eat meat, so, um, and my cholesterol is fine. So I wouldn't take too much umbrage at that. So get those eggs in, they've got way more nutrients. The girls are keep busting poor Mark's balls. They do. Those strong girls, they keep busting those balls. <laughs> That's got to be the top comment from the whole entire live, Debs. Well done. Look at that. Five laughs. <laughs> but yeah, we are getting more balls. I promise, ladies. We are getting more balls. So Sam eats eggs every day and her cholesterol has gone down. So eggs every day, Sam's cholesterol's gone down, so obviously the medical reports that are out are correct. So yes, yeah, Steph, get eating those eggs, don't worry about that. They do contain good cholesterol. So those of you that are unfamiliar, uh, with, there's two types of cholesterol. You've got HDL, which is your good cholesterol, and then you've got LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, and together they form your cholesterol levels. Um, Sometimes when I go for cholesterol testing, I do have medically high cholesterol, but I have really high HDL and really low LDL. So that is not a concern at all to anyone in the medical profession. So make sure that, so the HDL um, comes from good fats. So avocado, salmon, omega-3s, um, not so much omega-6s, but definitely omega-3s um, and eggs contain both. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions about the gym, exercises, weight progression, protein, where we can get protein from? If not, then maybe we can have a quick chat about Christmas prep. Maybe, um, so some of you that have been a member for nearly a year or six months, have you got any ideas of how you are going to be doing this, 
the Christmas season this year with all the ideas that we've given you at Ab Fab and the healthy habits. Some of the things that you're going to be changing this Christmas that might be interesting to learn about. So anything you'll be changing this year that you've done in previous years where you've suddenly thought, oh, do you know what? Not this year, because I know better. <laughs> so Deb's is off to pack. Ah, oh, she's going on holiday. She's going to the Sun, Canary Islands. We're not all jealous, are we, ladies? <laughs> We're not all jealous at all. It's freezing. <laughs> so Sam Gill's going to drink less. Excellent, that's good. That's a really good one, probably a top one. And as I say, everything in moderation. So you can enjoy a drink, just not to excess. Maybe there's some um, food wins that you can make. Maybe you won't be eating as much uh, cauliflower cheese, but you're going to have cauliflower or some something else like that. Sue has a question about the recipes on the app, nutrition info. The recipe front page is different to the nutrition page. Is that the AbFab recipes, Sue, or is that the is that the recipes that come with the app? No. I'm not sure I understand the question. The recipe front page is different to the nutrition page. I don't think Jane's on to answer that. Jane's the app guru. So Claire said, "Is it yeah? Is it are you comparing? Is it comparing apples to apples and pears to pears, or is it apples and pears?" Yeah, so that's a good point, Claire. Well done. Yeah, so it's either grams or percentage. That might be that might be the answer, Sue. If not, if you can, um, after this live, send me a screenshot of both, and then we can see what's going on with that. Not, not sure without it in front of me. And that'll be great. Because I know, Sue, you're a big user of them. And you, oh, my, my iPad's wobbling. I think I'm wobbling. <laughs> yeah, so I know, Sue, you do a lot of recipes from there. And you very helpfully post all your food pictures in all the groups. So well done, you. I think you give a lot of ladies a lot of inspiration. As do all your cooks. So Belinda and Viv, all doing amazing with your cooking and the food pictures. So maybe we should get some more food pictures up from everyone else. Sam does um, a lot of posts as well about her food, which is awesome. So Sue's, she's posted a picture with a question. Okay, great. So hopefully Jane will pick that up. That'd be great. Hey Rabs, how you doing? Hope your day wasn't too stressful today in A&E. Anyone got any more questions? I think I've been chatting away for about 45 minutes now and chewed your ears off. So I'm probably going to go and eat my dinner. So what's people eating for dinner tonight? I've got, I'm going to make a homemade soup today with um, some, with a bean mix, uh, which has some pearl barley in it as well, um, with um, some chopped tomatoes. So that'd be a nice protein hit protein soup because it's freezing today I've been freezing so I need something nice and warm in what's everyone got for dinner tonight everyone got a ro anyone got a roast so obviously on your roast the protein eat the protein first <laughs> leave the potatoes <laughs> cottage pie with green veg yum nice Luby Oh, hi Mandy, I didn't see you on. How are you? I saw you was out today with your sister. Look lovely. Tell us how the Van Gogh um, experience is. That's something I'm looking at doing. Any more questions before I pop myself off? So Jenny's got salmon, chicken, pea curry and roasted veg. Oh wow, that is a massive protein here. Good stuff. 
And Belinda says soup so good to add lagoons for additional protein. Yeah. So instead of just making tomato soup, I'm making tomato and bean soup. So it's nice and hearty and wholesome. Warm in and it won't sit on my belly because I've got to get up early tomorrow. See all you lovely ladies at gunpowder. So any more questions guys? Oh, am I signing off for this Sunday? Cool. Can't see any more questions coming in. Chickpea curry, not chicken. <laughs> They're both really good protein sources. <laughs> so Mandy said it's worth a visit. It was a good day with Norma. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad you sisters had a lovely time, even though it was freezing cold. But I hope it was warm inside. All right, guys. So if you've got no more questions, I am going to sign off. It is quarter to seven. So you can all go and eat your dinner if you haven't already. Have a lovely, lovely Sunday evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekends. Get those classes booked in for next week. And remember, progress those kettlebells and those dumbbells if we can, even if it is for the first. Well, see you all in the gym next week. Thornwood and Gump. <laughs> all right, guys. Take care. Have a lovely, lovely rest of your evenings. And I will see you next week. Goodbye.